So you got the Israelites. Let's, let's, try to, let's try to get a setting here, okay? So you got the Israelites. They had just gotten free from 400 years of slavery, right? And they've seen multitudes and multitudes of miracles, like the parting of the Red Sea, you know, they walked through it. And then the pillar of fire that they saw at nighttime that they followed, because that was Jehovah or, G or God, you know, that they were following. Got a Bible. And then now, now they get this manna that supernaturally comes to them uh, in the morning and they collect it and they eat it, right? For their substance, for their food. And now they're complaining against it because they've got, that's all they got to eat. Nothing else but manna. So, but let's, 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 let's get forward a bit because Right after they get they get out of Egypt, they actually get to the promised land sooner than, than what they, they thought. So let's 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 jump back a few chapters to chapter uh, thirteen. We're gonna read there. So let me just turn there real quick. So I mean, when Pastor asked me to speak, I was like, you know, what can what can I give? What can I share with these with the, with the people here? What can I share? And I I remember that night when we were praying at the at the praise at the prayer gathering, um, just really 
Um, and I talked to, I, I know I remember talking to Brother Angel about this before at his apartment, about just really looking at um, the things that have been going on, the circumstances in our life. And sometimes, I mean, we, we all hate to say it, but oftentimes, the only times we normally pray is when we're desperate, right? When, when we're in need of something, or very rarely do we pray when we're, we, we got things together. You know, I mean, I, 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 I get you guys to agree with that, right? <laughs> but, uh, but you know, the, you know the, we, see, we see here the Israelites are, you know, they just got free. Uh, they've gotten, like, uh, uh, jewels and, and gold and stuff from the Egyptians, telling them to leave. And uh, now they're on their way to the promised land. They've seen these miracles happen before their eyes. And, and, and now they reach the promised land. And this is where we start. Verse 25 and 13. And, and I really want you guys to just kind of picture your guys' self in their shoes, okay? I want you to, don't read, don't read, oftentimes we read the Bible and, and we, we, uh, we set aside as history, we set it aside as like it happened to them. Sometimes I just want you guys to be a part of it, you know? Sometimes like when you read like that, uh, a novel or something, you get, you feel like you're a part of a novel or something like that. So I want you, the Bible, I want you to really just put yourselves in their shoes. So as, as we go, if we, as we go through the scriptures today, I want you guys to consider that, okay? So after exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses uh, and Aaron. So this is where they're, they're, they're at the promised land. They're basically, all they do is cross over and they're in the promised land. And the whole community of Israel at Kadesh. In the wilderness of Paran, they reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit they had taken from the land. This was uh, the report to Moses. We entered, a, entered the land you sent us to explore, this, which is the promised land. And it is indeed bountiful, a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. There is a kind of fruit it produces. There's this kind of fruit it produces. But the, the people living there are powerful, and their towns are large and fortified. We have saw, we even saw giants, They're the descendants of the Anites, the Amalekites. The Amalekites live uh, lived in the uh, Negev, and the Hittites, the Jesuvites, and the Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread the bad report about the land amongst the Israelites. The land we, the land we traveled through and explored and devoured uh, oh, I'm sorry. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes and lives there. All the people we saw there were huge. We even saw giants. They are the descendants of the Anites. Next to next to them, we f we felt like grasshoppers, and that's what they thought too. So we see here that God. As they're little bit out of Egypt, and God has miraculously got them through the the, uh, the, the Red Sea by parting it, and He was a He was a pillar of fire for them at nighttime as they're walking, right? And now they get to the point where they're going to enter what God has promised them. At that time, Egypt was like probably the most powerful nation in the whole world. So these the other nations shouldn't seem that powerful to them, but but they saw they saw the people in there, they saw uh, with their own eyes the size of them, and they they and they compared them to themselves, and they became like grasshoppers in their eyes, just like how they said. Let's 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 continue with the story, and we're gonna go to fourteen, okay? And we're just gonna read through one through eleven, and then we'll we'll, we'll talk some more. Uh, then the whole community began weeping out loud. So put your guys in their shoes again. If you heard this, 
This is what happened. Everybody in the community, everybody in the village, they, they, they just began crying. This is the, then the whole community began weeping out loud, and they cried all night. Their voices rose in a great uh, choir to protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in Egypt, or even here in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to this country, only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? They, pl they, they plotted amongst themselves. Let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground before the whole community of Israel. Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, tore their clothes. Um, they said to all the people of Israel, the land we traveled through and explored is, one, is a wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us uh, safely into that land and give it to us. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord, and don't be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey for us. They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. But the whole community began to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites in their tabernacle. And the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? Will they ever believe me? Even after all the miraculous signs I have done among them. So we'll stop there for a moment. So, after looking at this story and putting yourselves in the Israelites' shoes, I mean, I, I, I can see myself uh, complaining a little bit, uh, and, and, then, and then I can, and, and then I can see I can see myself uh, acknowledging the strength of uh, you know considering the strength of my uh, enemies or 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 the or, or um, the thing the forces that are against me or uh, my cons my pros and my cons. That's very that's very natural uh, for uh, all of us to do. Um, but the people, they saw, what, what, what I'm getting at is they, the people saw their circumstances and they weighed, they weighed it between God, well actually they didn't weigh it between God, they actually weighed it against themselves and their capabilities and what they can do and, and, they, and they said, no this is, this is impossible, this is something that uh, I'll, I won't be able to do, and they gave up, and they chose to believe the rumors that they heard and the lies. You know, I I, I believe those are lies that those guys were, uh, the other twelve uh, scouts were talking or telling them, and um, oftentimes, oftentimes, we we we, we listen to um, what people say. And it's not only people what they say, but we, we, we always compare people, we compare things to ourselves, and we, we, we often get hurt. Not by others, but by ourselves. All we do is we just, and we make things confusing as, we, as we, we concentrate more and more on our problems, as we concentrate more and more on our, 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 our uh, uh, where we fall short and, and our uh, uh, incapabilities. Uh, what we don't know, uh, what we do know. And this is all practical stuff that we're taught as, as children, you know. Um, you know, before you make a decision, you know, uh, make sure you, you uh, go through it, make sure you can actually fulfill it, which is reasonable, which is, which is right. But it's a little different when, when you've been, you know, miraculously saved from uh, a, a nation that is supposed to be the most powerful nation. It, it's, it's a little different when you've been, uh, you've crossed a, a sea, you know, uh, that, that on dry land makes the sea gets sparked. It's a little different when, 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 when God himself comes down in your midst and you've seen him once, you know. 
and you see you see him as a pillar of fire every night. So, so, so what I'm saying here is, oftentimes, even though, because these people, the Israelites, they, they're they're uh, God's people. They're people that uh, that know God. They've seen him. They heard. They've heard him speak to Moses at least, and they've seen his power. But yet, they 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 all they choose to look at their their capabilities. They look they look at themselves to get them out of this problem. So let's I'm gonna I'm gonna read another scripture here from 14, and then. Uh, I want to share some other verses with you. So if we look at 14.39, verse 39, it says, Then Moses reported to the Lord the Lord's word. So this is right after God's awesome presence comes down. God basically says, that's it. They're not, you guys aren't going in. You guys are not coming in. The only people that are coming into the promised land is Caleb and Joshua. And you guys are going to have to go back around the desert. He didn't kill them. He could have. He just said, you got to go back. Just go back and you guys are going to circle around the desert for a while. So, after the Israelites heard this, let's just read, that when Moses reported the Lord's words to all of Israel, all the Israelites, the people were filled with grief. Then they got up early in the next morning and went to the top of the range of the hills. Let us go, they said. We, we realize that we have sinned, but now we are ready to enter the land the Lord has promised, promised us. But Moses said, why are you now disobeying the Lord's, uh, the Lord's orders to return to the wilderness? It won't, it won't work. Do not go up into the land now. You will only be crushed by your enemies. Because the Lord is not with you. When you face the uh, uh, Amalekites and the, and the Canaanites in, the, in battle, you will be slaughtered. The Lord will abandon you because you have abandoned the Lord. But the people have finally pushed ahead toward the hill country. Even though neither Moses nor the Ark of the Lord's Covenant left the camp. Then the Canaanites, the Amalekites, and the Canaanites who lived in those hills came down and attacked them and chased them back as far as war. Man, I can really relate to this. Uh, you know, when you, when, you, when you cause a big problem or you, or, or you feel you're at fault of some issue, what do you do? Naturally. I don't know about you guys, but I often, what I normally do is I, I, go, I go into the problem like, uh, let me try to fix this. You know, let me let me go ahead and try to fix this. So, so we see the Israelites here. It's so natural for them to do. Like, oh, you know what? God really wants us. Oh Lord, I didn't know you want us to go in. If you want us to go in, you know what? Let's go in. I'm gonna go in for you, God. Let's just do it. And then Moses tries to stop them, and he said, No, no, no. I know, I know. I'm gonna do this for God. You know, I'll go ahead and do this for God. And they go in. And they just mess up. They just get they just get messed up by the enemy. They just get beat up, and they and then the Lord was not with them, and they just they they, they got they got uh, pushed back all the way. I'm assuming more of it's like another country, so <laughs> they got pushed out of that country into a different one. So you know, for us, we we oftentimes we see a problem and want to fix it right away, but God God doesn't want that. God doesn't want us to fix anything. Because oftentimes when we try to fix things, what we end up doing is confusing other people. We confuse the problem. We make things worse. And we end up hurting other people around us, just like how the Israelites hurt themselves or other people around them. So what, what God is actually asking us to do here is... Um, let me just look at those here. Sorry. Um... Yeah, so, so, so again, you're just, you're just making your, your situation worse. So when you, when you disobey God, and there becomes a problem, and then you try to fix the problem yourself, you just make your situation worse. And now, okay, now we can go back to 21. We don't have to turn there, but 
now, now we're at the point where, okay, you you made a bad decision, all right, and you gotta live with it, right? You gotta live with it. You sometimes decisions that you make in your life, you can't go back and change. You just can't. You can't go back and take your words back. You know, it came out already. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're sorry, but you already said it. You know, so you can't take that back. But what God is saying here, we'll get to that. And then <laughs> you try to fix it in your own way. Whether it be, you know, trying to console another person in your relationship or trying to, uh, you know, make things right somehow in your own special way. God's not, at, God's not looking for you to fix anything. If, any, if you guys get anything out of this today, God's not looking for you to fix anything. He's not asking you to prove yourself or fix anything. And then, you know, at, so after all the Israelites complaining and complaining and not going, not getting their way, now their whole course and, and their um, their uh, direction that God wants, because God wanted them to be in the promised land, now they're not in the promised land because of the decision. But God has another plan for them, you know? God still has a plan for them. Um, but then, even after God spares their life for their their actions, um, God still feeds them, you know, because they're wandering the desert with no food right now, and no water. And God back and gives them water as well. But why why is manna significant? Why did I why did I choose this story to talk about? Because this manna, this manna is significant because it 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 it, uh, it represents it represents something. Because even though you, 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 you made bad decisions in your life, and even though you probably can't take them back, you can't go back and rewind time and take whatever you did back. But God is still willing. God is still willing. God is still willing to, to, to be with you and save you and provide for you. You see, because the Israelites... God didn't say, go back and I'm not going to provide for you. You're just going to, you know, go fit for yourselves, you know. I mean, if anything, I mean, if it was another person, if it was another benefactor, of course, that benefactor would have been like, disobey me, all right, well, you're on your own. You're not going to get any uh, benefits from me anymore. I'm sorry. But our Lord, he's so good. He's so good. He still gives him manna. Even after... Even after the fact that, uh, even after the fact that uh, they disobeyed him. So what is it? So you can look at manna in two different ways here. It was just then, and in the past. But use him as life to give you strength, as of right now. And and keep your eyes on him, because when your eyes fall off of him, you 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 get out of sync with God. And just like the Israelites, and just like us, because it's so it's so easy for us. And I'm not I'm not trying to say that it's it's any one of us, or if or if it's just me, but it's so easy for us to fall back into the natural way of thinking, and and, and, and try to uh, reason things out with our own reasoning. And, and sometimes things don't make sense, and sometimes we just need to we just need to really just put our faith in God. And we just need to cry out to him. We just need to run into him, and 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 uh, and, uh, and and seek his seek his and trust in him, and trust in him, and seek his grace. So maybe things aren't going right in your life. Maybe you maybe you feel disappointed uh, about yourself your whole life. You know, maybe you never met up to your measurements of you know greatness or your family's level of greatness, or maybe you just feel like a failure. Um, Maybe just talking about myself, but <laughs> praise God. Uh, but I know I'm a child again. Amen. But here, here's a scripture for you guys. And then uh, we're, we're going to close here probably in a little bit. That's a short message today. Um, it says in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 uh, and 19, it says, Even though the fig trees have no blossom and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails 
and the fields lie empty and barren. Even though the flock uh, dies in the fields, and the cow, uh, the cow, uh, cows are barren and are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me uh, as sure-footed as a deer, able to tread upon the heights. So, I, I close with that, but you, I just want to really put this, I, I can't really express it in words, but I just really want to put this in, into you guys, that, and, and in myself, I'm probably trying to convince myself right now, <laughs> but, you know, I gotta put my eyes, I, I gotta put my eyes on towards God. I gotta, I gotta look at Him. I gotta look at His goodness, not my goodness. I gotta look at Him. Otherwise, I, I fall short all the time. And I'll be like the Israelites and I'm, I'm so willing, I'm so ready and willing to give up all the time. I'm so ready to just throw in the towel. I'm so ready to just stop fighting for, for what He has asked me to pursue. And I want you guys to know <laughs> I want you guys to know that you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Just like Psalm says, my eyes are ever toward the Lord, and He will put me on the net. Even though I set up the net for myself, even though I set up the trap for myself, even through my, even though my bad decisions, just like the Israelites, even though my bad choices brought this forth, even though I messed up the relationship, even though I messed up these things in my life, God, if I keep my eyes towards God, man, He's gonna He's gonna pull me out of it. I don't know how, but He is. You know, my life, my life is, 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 is so, sometimes you look at your life and, you, and, you, and you, you count it as very unvaluable. You count it as just like, you know, I'm just going through these mundane routines. But God sees, looks down and he sees value in you. And he sees, I mean, he, he sees so much value in you that he's willing to die for you. Even if you made bad decisions. Even if you, if you've chosen to not listen to him. Even though you've chosen to, 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 uh, to hate, even if you chose to hate him, you know, it, it, it even says, you know, I, I was I was reading numbers when I was reading this lesson, and I, I was just thinking about verse 14, 11, chapter 14, 11, when the Lord said to Moses, how long will this people treat me with contempt? Will they ever, will they never believe me, even after all the miraculous signs I have done among them? You know, and I really thought about that, I really thought about that. And um, I was thinking, I said, I said to myself, you know, God has done so many things in my life, and I still don't trust Him. Yeah, of course, of course I'll trust Him for my salvation. I'll trust for Him. I'll trust in Him to get into heaven. But I can't trust Him for this one little thing. You know, I, I can't even trust Him because I gotta put my hands into it, and I gotta, I gotta control it, and I gotta, and I have to make sure things go out my way. Otherwise, it's not right. You know, and, and, and God, God, God really dealt with me with that. Um, he, he showed me a lot of things that I was missing. And I, I was just like the Israelites. And I was, because when, when you despise what God has put before you, your, your current circumstances, whatever they might be, whether it be in marriage or at work or a co-worker or, or um, um, you know, a class that you're taking at the college, Whatever circumstance it might be, and you begin to despise it. Know this: God is using that class to pull the impurities out of you, you know. And and, and I, I praise God. I pray God. I, I praise God that He's doing that in my life right now, and I know He's doing that in your lives as well. But I'm not going to despise that anymore. You know, I'm, I'm choosing, even though my heart says, "Man, I hate that," because when I do that, what I do is I, I, I choose to despise His man. I choose to despise His. His way of, uh, of deliverance. You know what I mean? Even though, see that man was their hope, even though they chose the bad things. You know, even though they, they chose not to go to the promised land, God was giving, God was sparing them, giving them manna so they can just survive and live still. You know? So even though, I, like in Habakkuk, it's just like, even though things does not go your way, even though nothing grows, even though there's nothing that produces fruit in your life, you know what? I'm still going to praise God. You know? I'm still going to praise God. Even though there's no fruit, there's no life anymore. There probably is no life anymore. But you know what? I'm going to praise God, and He's going to be my strength. 
and he's going to make my feet strong, like how it says in here, and I'm going to be able to jump. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'll close with this story, and then uh, Rajiv, if, uh, and I'm going to open up the altars. If, if you guys want for prayer, I'll, I'll be available, but I'm going to close with this story, and then uh, I'll say a few more things, and then we'll, we'll close. Um, so, as I was, I was preparing for this, this, this really, this story came back to my remembrance um, about my niece. Her name's Lainey. <laughs> when she was about two years old, I don't know, I think she was, no, yeah, but no, three. Three, she was three. And um, my brother had a, you know, my brother, okay, so they had kids like, um, Lainey's three, Jason's like probably two, you know, so they had, a, they, they had them like back to back almost, kind of. <laughs> so, so Amy is three, Jason's like two, and then they have this, this newborn, Anjali, and she's like just been born, right? So, and I'm not sure if who you are. I'm a middle child, so I, I don't, uh, I, I don't understand where Lady's coming from because she's the oldest. So, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. She was so. I went, I went over to their house, and boy, she was just begging for attention. From everybody, because you know, little brother and little sister, mommy and daddy were just kind of focused on them. And I came, and I wanted to hold the new kid. You know, I don't want a new kid. I was holding a new kid, and then um, I think I, I, I put her, I put Anjali down, and then Lainey was playing by herself over there for some reason, and then um, she she did something really, I think something like a toy that fell on her pinky or something like that. And it wasn't, it, like, if, if you were there, you'd be like, why would she cry because of this? I know she's a tough girl. She's only, she's three, I know she's only three, but why would she cry? But she was bawling her eyes out, right? And her, then her mom started yelling at her, lady, stop, that's not even worth crying for, you know? And then she just kept crying, and she ran, she ran into me. And she's like, and then she ran in my laps, and what I did was I was just like, okay, well, she probably just wanted attention because, you know, I was thinking to myself, she probably just wanted attention. And so then I, then, I, then I held her. And then she just, and I rocked her. And then she was just crying and crying. I was like, where does it hurt? Right here. You know, she points at her pinky. And I'm like, okay, she's just really just wanting attention. That's what she really wants. Um, and I was just like, oh, man, that's so selfish of her. You know, I was thinking, I didn't say that. I was just thinking in my mind. But she was crying her eyes out, you know? And I was just thinking, you know, even when, even when we're at fault, even when we, I, I, I don't know what I was gonna do to fix her problem. You know, I really didn't know what I was gonna do. I, was, I guess I'll just hold her, you know, I just hold her. But I, and I just let her cry. But you know what, that's, that's what the Lord wants from us today. He wants for us to be like little children. He's not asking us to perform for Him. Because He knows what we'll do. He knows exactly how we perform. We'll be like the Israelites. We'll turn our backs on Him. We'll, we'll, we'll try to fix things and make things worse. But he's asking, what He's asking for us to do is to, to run into Him and cry. Cry to Him. Just tell Him all your problems. To look at Him in your problems. Not to, not, to, not, to, not to focus on your problems, but just to run to Him. You know, instead of trying to fix your own problem, run to Him. Just like how my little niece did. And, and just, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what I was going to do at that moment. But God knows exactly, God, I'm not God, so. But, but He knew, He knew, He knew what He was going to do. And, and, and just like how Lainey, my little niece, trusted somehow I was going to make things better. I didn't know how I was going to make things better. But she thought that if she cried in my arms, she was going to be better. So I was like, okay, sure, you can do that. But she thought that she, if, she, if she did that, she would be better. That's what God desires from us. That kind of trust. That kind of trust that, that, that when we've blown it, when, when we've fallen so short, when we've seen our circumstances and, and we, we, we've chosen not to believe in God, 
He still wants us to turn back to him. He still wants us to look at him. He still wants us to run to him and trust that he can fix it. Because he can. He can make things better. So, I want you guys, I want you guys to go ahead and close your eyes. We're going to pray. And then, um, Reggie, you can go and play the music, but just really softly. So, so maybe things have not gone your way. And maybe everything in your life up to now has been a disappointment or you just haven't met your expectations. But today the Lord has his arms wide open and ready to forgive you and show you how much you are worth to him and how acceptable you are to him. So will you trust him today? Will you trust him not only with your salvation, but your, your current circumstance? What you're dealing with right now that gives you the most trouble. Will you trust him with that today? I know it's really fragile and it's easily broken, but he's, he's ready to fix that. And in fact, he says today that, he, that he's going he's gonna to look upon that and he's going to make it new. It says in Revelations that, Behold, I am making all things new. Now that's our God. That's his character. That's what he loves to do. That's what he, that's what he never fails to do. So would you, would you be willing to extend your brokenness, your broken jar <laughs> to him and let him fix it for you? So we're going to pray for two things here. I mean, three things, I'm sorry. First, we're going to pray for repentance, for this despising, possibly despising the circumstance that we're in right now and, and also trying to fix it ourselves and not looking towards God. Because when we do that, we're actually rejecting God and His, His ways. We're reject, rejecting God Himself. No, brothers and sisters, God has asked us to trust Him so completely that he, he wants us to run into his arms just like how Lady has runs into to, to his own, her uncles. And so, and then the next one we're going to pray for, we're going to, we're going to ask for strength to keep our eyes on him alone. And then we're going to ask for God to give us peace and love for their current circumstances and, and, and just, just to make that new. So if you would just agree with me right now, I'm going to pray over you guys. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, that, that, that you, you made us, Father God, and you love us, Father God, and you've given us value, Lord. And God, we look to you for our strength, Father God, and we look to you for our, our hope, God. And Father, we just, we just want to repent right now. Um, if, if that's you right now, if you feel that's that's... If, if, I'm, if this would speak to you, would you just raise your hand? I'm not, I'm not going to look. It's just between you and God. I got my eyes closed as well. So just go ahead and just do business with the Lord. And if that's you, just, just to come in agreement with this prayer that I'm going to pray right now. Father, I repent, Lord. I repent for trusting in myself more than you. I repent, Father God, for seeing my circumstances tougher than what you can... Uh, tougher than you, Lord. Lord, I repent, Father God, for trying to uh, control things, Lord. I, I repent, God, for the hurt that I, I've caused you in our relationship because I, I've despised what you've given me. Lord, I've despised you, God. Ultimately, I've despised you, Lord. Lord, I don't want to hate you, God. Lord, I, 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 just, I just ask, Father, right now that you would come in and and, 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 and reveal to me the things, Father God, in my heart that, that I want to control, Lord, that, I, that I'm not willing to give up to you, Lord. 
Father, I, I can't fix these things. They're broken, Lord. And I, Lord, I repent for even trying to, to try to fix them, Lord. And I repent, Father God, for despising what you've given in my life. And I ask, Father, that you would give me a love, Father God, for the things and the precious things you put in my life, Lord. And Lord, I just, I just receive now your forgiveness. And Lord, I, I pray, Father, that you would strengthen our relationship where I can trust you even more. Thank you in Jesus' name. And Father and Lord, we pray again today, Lord. Uh, if that was you, just 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 give him praise right now in your own, your own way. Uh, because you're so willing to forgive us. And Lord and Father, we just we just ask you again, Holy Spirit, that you give us eyes to see clearly. That you, that you give us eyes, Lord, that are focused only on you, Lord, and not on our circumstances, Lord. That everything that happens in our life has meaning. And Lord, that you can use that and things that were meant for evil, Lord, that you can make them good in our life, Father God. And Lord, we just give you praise, Father. We thank you, Lord, for doing that in our life, Father God. And we choose to see you in our situations. We choose to see you and your goodness in all our situations, Lord. And God, I just pray, Father God, that you give us a peace and a, and a love for the, the, the situation right now in our life that, that, that hurts us the most. That, that causes us uh, sleepless nights, Lord. I pray, Father God, right now for all my brothers and sisters, that you would just give them a love for that and an understanding for that. And not only that, but Lord, I pray, Father God, for a brand new, uh, Father God, love for it, Lord, a brand new life in that area, Father God, that that, that which is dead would come alive again. Lord, I, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you reveal truth. And Father, we give you all the praise and glory. Be with my brothers and sisters as they leave today, Lord. Heal them. Be with them. Encourage them. Lord, we just love you. We love your word. We love your truth, Father God. And you're so willing to love us back. No matter where we're at. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So I'll be up here for prayer if you guys need it. But uh, be, feel free to be dismissed. Thank you.